everyone. Welcome to the uh, virtual panel, uh, my, my Latinx Roots of Project Management, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, okay, sorry. Um, so this virtual event is hosted by PM Ready, a nonprofit providing resources and a platform to empower the next generation of project contributors and leaders. Um, my name is Evelyn Chow, and I am the founder and president of PM Ready. Um, and no matter who you are and where you are from, I am so excited to have you join us for an intergenerational conversation. Um, so. Uh, before we begin the conversation, please uh, let me announce some housekeeping matters. Um, so firstly, this meeting will be recorded. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, you can like uh, wait until the discussion session or you can type it in the chat. Um, uh, be sure to like mute yourself unless you're speaking uh, and turn on your video if possible. I mean, it's not a requirement, uh, but, you know, if possible and um, complete the post event survey. And then the agenda will be uh, just like a quick get to know you guys, get to know you guys and uh, get to know the panelists and then the Q and A and then message for the youth. So it'll be short and simple and um, yeah. So um, also if you, are, if you are a PMI certified member, please remember that you can uh, earn one free PDU from attending this book talk. Okay, so um, first, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, yeah. So first, let's start by getting to know each other. Um, yeah. So number the first question is, what is your role? Um, are you a student? Are you a PMI PMI certified member, or are you an other? Um, I'm a student, so I would I would type an S in the chat. So yeah, I'll give a few seconds for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we have a few more. Okay. And then the second question is, what is your project management experience? Are you a um? Are you? A, I want to be a project management manager. Or are you a new manager or are you a seasoned manager? Um, I am technically not yet at project manager yet, so I would say I want to be man. I want to be a project manager. So yeah, W. But technically, we are all like project managers because we do projects like every day. Um, <laughs> and then the last question is um have you ever worked with a culturally diverse team um yes in a chat or no okay um also i'm glad um to see our audience coming from such diverse backgrounds um and welcome again everyone um and no matter what you know about project management or how you feel about working in a culturally diverse team, um, I'm sure you will find today's uh, conversation today really insightful. Um, okay, so now it is my great honor to introduce our panelists, uh, Ms. Stephanie Alvarez and Mr. C Mr. Stephen Cortez. Um, do you guys wanna say hi? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, good, after good evening team. Um... For those who are in the central time zone, good good evening. For those in the Pacific, uh, good early afternoon. Okay, uh, Stephanie, I don't think she is. Yeah, um, yeah I am not. Um, I'm Stephanie Lewis. I'm... Yeah, I, I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Steph so the the actual Stephanie is not is is not here today. Um, but I'm just gonna introduce both of you guys um real quick. And so uh so um so I'm gonna start with Miss Alva with Miss um Miss Alvarez. So she 
yeah, so she has uh, over 17 years of pro program uh, program management experience, and she is well known as a strategic problem solver or crisis management expert in fast-paced settings. Um, and Mr. Cortez is a um, manager at Physical Rehab Rehabilitation Network, and he has uh, he has on 10 years of multi-site management experience. Um, and both Mr. Al Miss, Miss Alvarez and Mr. Cortez have Mexican cultural backgrounds. Um, so Miss uh, Mr. Cortez, <laughs> well, yeah. welcome and thank you both. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation to share your journey with our audience today. Um, yeah. So, um. Yeah, so I'd like to start the first com the first question to kick off uh, our conversation this evening. So um, could you sh share with us what roles do you currently perform? Um, it could be a role at work or a role in your co communities. Definitely. Uh, so I'll, I can kick it off. Uh, so my current role right now, um, as, you as you mentioned, I'm working at Physical Rehabilitation Network. Um, Really, I, I work the my main role, and this is why I put other in the chat when you mentioned in my PM, uh, you know, student PMI, um, or other. I fell in the other category because technically my background, my education is in project management. However, I manage a scheduling department for a multi site schedule, uh, for multi site uh, rehabilitation clinics. We have around 180 offices in the nation around the nation, uh, majority in our west coast. Um, and we're stationed out of California, but as I mentioned, what my project management experience comes in is more around telecommunications. Um, that's something that I've been able to, you know, as a manager call center, I've learned a lot more about telecommunications, um, you know, the call tree, you know, how, once again, my, while well, I just look at scheduling, but the telecommunications impacts not only our patient experience, but it does impact other departments. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, you know, we have an IVR, which is many of you guys know what you guys have experienced an IVR over the phone. Um, it just gives, it's an interactive voice recognition pattern. Um, and once again, it gives you the option, you know, press one for this, press two for this. So with that, you know, we've seen that there's been a big impact in our patient care satisfaction because we're able to get the patient to the right department right away. Um, and like I mentioned, my project management really comes in, that's where it comes into play. It's like, how do we work with other departments? Um, so that's a little bit about my role. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, well, th thank you for sharing that. Um, so as a high school student, I am very curious about uh, how you usually spend a work day in your life. Um, and, uh, so, uh, you know, so Mr. Cortez, um, what does your typical workday life look like? Or typically? Uh, so you know, as I mentioned, I do manage a, and this is something that I, I see um, a lot in the project management role. It's like, you're going to have to wear multiple hats. Um, as I mentioned, my, my day to day is more managing a scheduling department call center. Um, so I look at, you know, what does my team need right away? You know, we're looking, you know, I manage a team of, of 35 agents. So, um, you know, any call offs, any, any immediate changes that need to happen. Um, a lot of the time I'm also putting, putting out quick fires, right? So uh, that's where my day goes, depending on if you have any issues, um, any, you know, any new updates that I need to inform our team about. As I mentioned, we schedule for 180 offices. So that means that we have approximately five to seven physical therapists in each office. So you multiply that number and it's, you know, there's so many changes going on day to day. Um, so now going into the project management experience that I've had, my day to day, a little bit there, it's more following up, you know, making, following up. That's one thing I will say about project management is like you have to follow up on every item that, you know, you made a, had a meeting, right? Because not every day it's going to be a meeting, mm -hmm. um, but you need to follow up on any pending items. Mm -hmm. And follow up is the most important, you know, depending after a meeting, we make sure I follow up with my notes of what we discussed, what we went over, and making sure that those, we hold our 
our teams and parties accountable to make sure that the work gets turned in as a more of a team environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you for sharing. Um, oh, I I did I do see a a question in the chat. Um, and uh, I mean I we can enter that during the Q and A session. Um, so you can just type it in the chat for right for now, and then we'll answer it later on. Um, okay, yeah. So it's it's it is really interesting to hear you describe uh you know what your typical workday looks like. Um, and so could you please reflect on the earlier time in your life? Um, and share how your how your professional story started as a student. Um, was was a project manager or leader um, your dream job when you were a student? So I think when grow, growing up as a student, you know, I can go back and I always thought business, you know, was going to be where I needed to be at. I love the idea of working in business, love the idea of making sure that I can, you know, I, I saw I glorify that job. So I really liked it. So I saw more of the finance aspect of it. Um, early in my community college, I went into accounting and then I figured how, you know, accounting is really spreadsheets. It is numbers. It is formulas that you're just having to memorize a lot less interaction with um, anybody uh, outside of your department. Uh, so I kind of stumbled because as I was working and going to college, I was working in a, in a call center um, and I saw how one, a lot of the principles that I was learning, I could easily apply to my role. Um, at the same time, opportunities came across to just grow in within the call center. Um, so as soon as, you know, I went from my supervisor, from, you know, an agent to a supervisor, over to a manager. And when I became a manager is when I graduated with um, my degree in project management. So that's where, you know, I already had my foot in the in a lot of the healthcare mm -hmm. um, customer service roles, working in, you know, like I said, I started off at a non-for-profit uh, clinics in Chicago, um, doing the same thing. That's where I got most of my experience, went into the insurance. And as I started growing, I started seeing that how my role in the, in any call center, any customer service facing uh, department has different you know we touch different departments we touch billing we touch patient care uh when i worked in insurance you know we we touch claims we touched um our retention and that was another big thing that i saw was how impactful and and this is you know when i started my career there i'm talking 2008 so i'm dating myself a little bit there uh but that was actually during a lot of the recession so that's also kind of when i got out of high school that was 2008 when the recession hit housing market went down so i just found something that was stable within my industry mm -hmm. um, and i was able to continue to grow so a lot of my professional story comes comes across as i was growing in my career and in my in my background and my experience mm -hmm. um so wow yeah, 2008 is it's not that, <laughs> that long ago. It was just like last year. It's, um, so as you grow up, is there any book or like a person, an event, or like a specific moment that really inspires inspired you to, uh, inspired you the most and really shaped who you are today as a pro project manager? I maybe you know what I I do have a, um when you'd mentioned, you know, maybe a, a manager, somebody that was able to inspire me um, or influence me, I've seen my previous manager, I think about that a lot. And he was very, I saw how he was able to manage meetings. Uh, he was facilitate meetings. Um, and even to this day, I like to say, I hold true to the, that adage that says, you shouldn't be the smartest person in that room. Um, so I always continue to, even in today's role and in this new organization, um, I look at people who are, you know, I want to say the truth better than me. They might be able to hold the conversation, better. they might be able to do follow up meetings or, you know, manage, uh, expectations, manage the characteristics, manage the personalities of each individual. Um, I would say, so I continue to learn, but. So yeah. I continue to learn from other people. Yeah, yeah. 
learning is a, like a lifelong journey. It's like a project within itself. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you for sharing. Um, so one goal of this panel is to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. And uh, the reason I would say is for our um, society to celebrate cultural heritage is that there is a connection between cultural impact and leadership. And I think that most people recognize the connection, but might not like uh, know what the connection exactly means. So I listed some common myths here about the cultural impact on leadership. Um, so we can do like a quick group discussion discussion exercise here. Um, so here's a question for everyone who is uh, joining on this conversation. Do you guys want to challenge on any of these myths? Um, and like or like debunk it. Yeah. I would say number four, it's definitely something that uh, I've learned that, as I mentioned, right, you have to rely on individuals, you have to rely on and trust. Mm -hmm. um, and as a leader, you're not going to know everything. As a leader, you have to rely and trust on your team uh, that you're dealing with, you know, professionals, or experts in their, in their career, in their field. Uh, so I'd say when I, I number four sticks out a little bit to me, um, you know, I know, like I said, I'm not the smartest in the room. Uh, I don't try to pretend or fake that I am. So, but, you know, you have to trust on your team. Yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, they all, they all kind of have like a strong meaning to it, but I would say number five really st sticks out to me or... Yeah, number five, because it's like, it's a very like a common misconception that uh, there's only like one leader per team or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, that's, that's definitely not true because, you know, in reality, almost everyone kind of takes on a leadership role from like time to time. They, like, it's always like, you, always free for people to like step up but also like step back when like circumstances change and you know different situations and stuff and it's like it's so it's like very important to kind of like teamwork and kind of uh like help each other and help all the employees kind of cultivate the necessary skills that that's needed to lead in their own unique way and then kind of adjust accordingly and like everything just like connects I guess um regardless of your title or anything um but yeah that's 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 what sticks out to me um but yeah so all of these are like uh myths and um can all be challenged in their own way um yeah so uh I so yeah um that was like sharing that was definitely, I definitely gained a lot of fresh understanding of culture and leadership and stuff, and the stuff might be, like everyone should know it, but I don't think everyone actually realizes it um, as a myth um, or like fully understands it. So, um, and then, so just a follow-up question. Um, so like, as you reflect on your life journey, could you please give us an example or a story about why learning and celebrating cultural differences is important to develop project leadership skills? If that makes sense. <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, I, I would definitely say and add, you know, it, it's important to learn and, and celebrate and respect the differences in our culture as well. Um, you know, because I think going into a corporate environment, you're dealing with a lot of personality you're dealing with a lot of cultures and the last thing that you want to do is be offensive or be offend offend somebody by you know comment or lack of you know respect or lack of being able to understanding uh so i think if i go back to my experience um i know that you know in celebrating other cultures and celebrating and understand and trying to understand um, you're able to really just open your mind with ideas and yeah so yeah I would say it keeps you open-minded and it lets you 
lets others pitch in with ideas. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's definitely great to hear from other people's like uh, stories, like uh, perspectives and, um, you know, life stories and kind of, you know, get ideas from that. And it's always really interesting. Um, so as you know, uh, people might have different definitions of the elements of their cultural heritage. Um, so how would you define your cultural heritage and uh, you know, which elements of your uh, Hispanic heritage shaped your understanding of the role of project leadership? Um, so, and, I, and I also found a blog titled Ten Principles of Leadership in Latino Style. Um, does any of these principles resonate with you? And is that for everybody or just want me to answer? Anyone can, anyone right. can join. Yeah, but like, what about you? What about you? Like, for me, there's a few that that stand out. Um, you know, one is "Si se puede." Number eight. Uh, it's a very known saying, an activist saying by uh, oh, uh, by who? Uh, ooh, by the farmer. I know it was a um, slipping my mind, but <laughs> it was an activist in the I want to say in Texas around the farming. And, you know, how a lot of farmers who were immigrants were mistreated and they rose up and that was one of their biggest chances, si se puede. So that sticks out a lot with me. Uh, yep. yep. Um, anyone else would like to? These all seem very interesting. And um, I think I always like, I always find like principles, like different principles from different uh, styles really interesting because um, they always, take a different view and perspective on stuff and it's great to to hear from their perspective and kind of incorporate it into your own life um but yeah just here to push for people to look at um i think that um i guess one thing that sticks out to me is um i guess like uh, number two consensia I think uh like I think knowing oneself like personal awareness they really get you, it really gets you to know like uh like who are you and like what kind of person you are um and like kind of like really reflect on yourself and uh, it really requires in depth like re reflection and self-examination and I think that really gets to know yourself a little about a lot better and then I think with that, you can better lead um, with knowing yourself a lot better. Um, and not just that, not just yourself too, other people as well. Um, yeah, so that was uh, very eye-opening. Um, you know, I always, I feel, I feel stimulated to re reflect on my own uh, cultural her heritage. Uh, but yeah, so that, now let's go back to the professional world um so could you please share with us what is the proudest project that um you have completed so far and i know you have completed like many projects um but it's like is there a project that is the most special or memorable or to you or the team or your or your team yeah no um i think you know as far as i would go back to like my first project as i mentioned i worked in the uh in a patient oriented call center um, this was, you know, my first leadership role and I was responsible for outreach to, I want to say, 160,000 patients. Um, and once again, we were reaching out to patients regarding their immunization records. So it was a project. It was a, I worked in a not-for-profit. We received a grant from, you know, our state or city um, to make sure that we're reaching out to our patients to make sure that they are up to date in their immunizations. So we're talking children, you know, from zero all the way up to, I guess, 13, when you start receiving immunizations, all the way up to the end of high school, um, you know, and then going into even, um, you know, in your early adult age, making sure that, you know, they're all caught up with immunization. So that was my first kind of project management role that I had. And that's why I feel that's really more special. It's just like, hey, it's the first one. It was very successful, learned a lot, you know, and back then we were doing a lot of our 
man like recording because once again any like you have to tally you have to make sure that you're keeping track of the how you're progressing and your success rate um so we were doing everything off paper so it was just a little bit you know now where everything is being based you know more electronic so it was definitely a special project i think it was just because it was also my first one mm -hmm. yeah um okay so now i would like to invite everyone in the audience to join a group like debate um so there was an old chinese saying uh, that reading 10,000 books is not as good as traveling 10,000 miles. And the former first lady, Ms. Mrs. Obama, used this saying when she visited Beijing University in 2014 to encourage the youth in China to go beyond the borders to experience different languages, cultural, cultures, and societies. So in your opinion, which is more important, reading uh, or traveling? I mean, they could both be equally as important, but what what sticks out to you the most, or is the most useful to you the most? Traveling, yeah. Traveling, yeah. Mr. Cortez, what about you? Definitely, uh, just the joy of traveling. I would definitely go with traveling, but I think you know sometimes. Uh, reading, uh, you know, because reading, it's also like the easiest way of traveling where you don't have, like, there's a lot of costs associated with travel. So um, sometimes it's easily overlooked to say reading, but so I would say both. Yeah, I would say both too. Um, I think it really depends on whether you are like a visual, but also like a, yeah, a, a visual learner or like you're a tactile learner. I know like a lot of homeschooled uh, kids, their parents would um, travel with them a lot more and visit museums rather than just sit at, sit at home and read books um, and I think that way this the, the kids um, like learn a lot more and kind of very delve into the experience like um, uh, like to look at the to the book experience or whatever they're learning and um, I guess for me I would say well obviously both are very important and, you know, sometimes reading, you can go places that you can't actually can go at all. Like you can go to, you know, fantasy land or something and, you know, go visit the fairies real quick. But I think, uh, yeah, both will be, both is equally as important. Um, yeah. So let's do another uh, group activity uh, real quick. Um, so I found some quotes from iconic hispanic leaders and if you were asked to provide a quote on a life principle or a leadership principle what would your quote look like um and i'll give you like one minute if you think about it well like what quotes from these I, this iconic Hispanic leaders, like what quote like resonates with you the most or stands out? Like that can that can be another thing to think about. I know coming up with a quote is really hard, and it's really hard to do on the spot. Sometimes you just think of it randomly, and you're like, oh my gosh, I love that, and you forget about it the next day, but. I think what I think the quotes that resonate with me mm, they're all very like iconic and very well known um and very useful in life but um I think the one that stands out to to me the most is Cesar Chavez's uh, you are never strong enough that you don't need help. I think that also resonates with what we just talked about, how life is a learning, how is, learning is a lifelong journey. I think that is very important to understand in life because I know that uh, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, 
high ego people who are like, oh, I can do this on my own. Um, I know I was like that when I was younger and mm -hmm. I would never want my mom's help on stuff. But, you know, now, you know, I wouldn't, I would not be where I was without, without her. So I think that's definitely a, a quote that really stands out to me because, um, yeah, it's like not only is, you know, you're never going to get enough help and you're always going to need some kind of help. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I think for, I love Frida Kahlo's one, uh, Frida Kahlo. You know, at the end of the day, we can endure much more than we think we can. I think that, you know, speaks to, you know, overall humans, yeah. like, spirits to just continue. We can endure a lot. We can continue to move forward. Wow. Um, and a lot of times we are our own worst critic. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we got to step away from that and just give, you know, give ourselves a break and make yeah. sure that, understand that, hey, we can keep going. We can keep going. Um, so I, I, I love that quote a lot yeah i think that also resonates with um selena's quote quotes is um all i need to do is try and do the best that i can do and you know i if you try that's and you, you try your best then you know you accomplish something in life and that's good um okay so my last my last question for mr cortez is this evening in um is in your opinion do you think project management needs to be learned at a younger age and why? Um, so yes, I think, you know, it's always good to start at a younger age. Um, you know, I think if, if I knew what I knew now um, or what I was learning, you know, because like I said, I was learning as, as I was going. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if I could apply it all every, you know, if I learned that before from managing, you know, once again, I think in school, early on in high school, you're already juggling mm -hmm. multiple projects, multiple classes, multiple subjects, you know, all the way through college, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of that, a lot of those skills are transferable skills. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot what we look at when, you know, going into college, going into that further education is transferable skills. What can we do to make sure that, you know, you know, maybe we have to shift down the line, but having the ability to work and manage multiple projects with deadlines, with, you know, project scopes and being able to build all that mm -hmm. um, definitely helps you not only in your professional life, but also in your personal life to be able to plan and execute a lot on, on your own goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, well, what about like the, uh, what about, the audience um like what do you what do you think do you guys think that project project management is useful or is needed to be taught to young to the youth or not needed i think it is i think it's useful because that cuz i mean well firstly i probably should think that it's useful because i made a nonprofit about it but um I think that it's really useful because like, because like life, as I said before, is a lifelong project and you will use it with literally almost anything. And you, you use it in school when you are planning a project or you, um, uh, or, you know, you are you know, play, uh, learning a new piece of music or, you know, just making this presentation. That's a project. So like, Anything you do, really, it's, it's it's a project, and I think with the right amount of like skills, uh, pro like with um with project management, it can definitely like enhance or boost your life, um, especially as a youth, a lot more. Um, Brandon Davis said, "Very much needed, and it should be taught earlier because it applies to so many topics." Yes, it does. Um, I agree because. Like, no matter what field you go into, whether it's, like, the medical field or even, like, um, you know, law or, you know, anything, really, consulting, project management will always be there. And even if you, like, as I said before, like, even if, you, even if you're a student um, uh, and you're, um, like, your you're schedule, because I'm a very scheduled person, like, I like to schedule my tasks, and I think... In the past, before project management, I never really, like, 
knew how to plan it right. And with project management, uh, I think I really organized my like my mind and you know, I was so stressed before and now I don't have as much stress now because I have all my thoughts listed onto um I have all my thoughts listed and because of project management. So yeah. So I so in my opinion, especially as a youth, I think that it's very useful um to me, uh to me at least. Um and I use it in my daily life. Um not everything, but a lot most a lot of stuff. Okay, um, so I love this discussion. Um, I want to stop here and ask if anyone has any questions for Mr. Cortez. And um, yeah. Oh, I know that there was a question before and she had to leave, unfortunately. Um, but I'll just answer her question and she can. Okay, um, so Yens, you asked, is any day during the week busier than others? So, yes, and I think it all depends on your industry, um, you know, so it really depends on your industry. So, as I mentioned, for me, um, definitely Mondays, Tuesdays, it's heavier. Uh, we got a lot of people coming back, working, yeah. you know, because one thing you'll see about professionals is we don't really understand work-life balance that much. So, sometimes we're working into the weekend, um, and, you know, Monday we have a lot of ideas that we're, you know, trying to, you know, maybe we met last weekend and, we need to follow up on those meetings. Uh, so I see that being, you know, Monday, Tuesday to be the heaviest. Mm, yeah. um, Fridays, it's a, it's an interesting day, depending on the, the, I think the time period of the year can also be very busy or sometimes it's just slow. Um, yeah. But I would say beginning of the week, I've seen it in a corporate environment to be the busiest. Yeah. Um, does, anyone, does anyone in the audience have any questions? I'll give a few minutes for that because I know like coming with a question on the spot is kind of on the spot. So uh yes, uh Mr. Chow. Hey, uh thanks for uh for coming today, Stephen. Uh mm -hmm. real quick question, a couple quick questions, but first and foremost, do you feel that your formal training as a project manager had a a significant impact in your ability to conduct the myriad of different uh, tasks. I mean, you are across multiple verticals uh, in uh, that deal innately with project management skills. Um, do you feel that there is a significant difference uh, having had this formal training as opposed to if you were to organically learn by yourself? So uh, definitely, thank, thank you so much for that question. So I would say, I think around for me was more around timelines, timelines and organizational skills, something that, you know, you either, I had to pick it up and learn from, and I, I think it, a lot of the tips and tricks that I have today with organization and, and timeline and forecasting did have to do with my education. Um, a lot of the on-the-job on the skills really require if I were to be learning it without the ed education, I feel like I would be at a disadvantage, like very much handicapped just because, like I said, I would have to just try to learn it on the spot. And I don't think that, I wouldn't think I would be successful if I didn't have the educational background. Excellent. Thank you. Now, uh, another question is, and being that, you know, we're, we're talking about the Latinx experience, being a Hispanic American, do you feel that there are any challenges or, or, or well, first positive side, any any unique elements being a Hispanic American project manager uh, that that really that that you like to share with the larger group? And also, do you do you feel that there's any challenges that are uniquely uh, that you are uniquely face uh, being that of a Hispanic American uh, project manager? And, and do you have and the third sub question is, do you have any advice for uh, budding uh, uh, young project managers to be uh, that, you know, it's particularly min uh, minorities on, on how they can really uh, 
get into the industry, uh, uh, you know, as formally as a project manager or as a program manager and, and, and really be able to be set up for success. Definitely, definitely. So, you know, um, I would say, you know, my background being Latino and being in Chicago, because I'm from Chicago, um, we have a huge population of Latinos. And that's really where my non my non for profit organization was a healthcare organization geared towards uh, poverty stricken communities. Um, so it really did, you know, it hit a wide range of diversity patients. Um, so for me, I think one of my advantages was I was passionate about my cause of helping people. I was very passionate about not only as a minority, as a Latino, like being able to speak to patients in their native language uh, was a big win. You know, growing up, that's exactly what we did for our parents. We translated all those documents, all the doctor visits, the phone calls that, you know, we did the translations as children. So to be able to provide a service to, you know, um, I guess the same demographic as your own culture, and you were able to quickly see the impact. Uh, so that's something that I guess I would say was a great advantage. Also, my my second additional language, both being fluent in, in writing and speaking Spanish, um, definitely gave me a, a leg up in the competition because it was... It, it was that other diversity that they were looking, you know, as I was going and growing, because as I was, as I'm transitioning out of that not-for-profit organization and going to more management experience, it also gave me the experience to connect with my, with my team, right? I, I come from a minority background. I, you know, I saw many my, different, and this is the other thing with diversity is there's just more than just race, right? We're talking race, sex, you know, orientation, religion. So there's a lot more than just that background of race. So it let me come in to meet my team with an open mind. And, you know, I'll say, okay, this is their background. This is their culture. And kind of what uh, Evelyn was saying, we learned there's an advantage just to working with different cultures. Um, so I would say, you know, those have been my advantages. Now, as far as a disadvantage or maybe, you know, as a barrier, um, I never saw it as that. Um, and I think I always seen it as a, as a positive thing to be able to um, be a leader yeah. and be a leader while being a minority. I saw it always as, as an advantage. My background was always as an advantage. And, can you repeat the secondary question? Oh goodness! Uh, <laughs> actually, I, I don't. You know, I, I was just rattling off three different uh, sub questions. I, I just remember the. I think I was I was talking about the the uh, uh, Hispanic uh, being the experience of, of uh, being a Latin American. What are some of the uh, um, u- unique aspects? And I think you answered that, and and also mm-hmm. the. Uh, some of the the challenges that you may may or may not experience, which I I think you also uh, talked about that from mm-hmm. uh, raising in Chicago. So, um, yeah. Uh, did you talk yeah. about uh, the message for the youth? Or oh yes, yeah. I think that was the last question. Uh, do yeah. you have any a, a, any any items to to partake to the budding project managers out there to us, uh, and particularly to minorities? Uh, it, you know, how they can really engage in the field and, and be set up for success. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I would kind of, you know, piggyback off my last answer, which is uh, dive, you know, steer into it, you know, be encouraged to um, to really engage in your own culture, right? Understand your background and don't think of it as a disadvantage. Think about it as an advantage um, because, we have, once again, America is very diverse. Our demographic, our markets are very diverse. So definitely come in with those ideas, with those fresh ideas, because that's exactly what we need in project manager and our corporate environments as we continue to push towards this more um, empathetic and uh, 
society. I think it's very much needed for you to speak up and for you to share your background and for you to be proud of that. And, you know, so I would say steer into your culture, um, you know, learn more about it if you need to. And all that's going to help you is help you grow, help you communicate and help you be a, more of an empathetic leader. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. I have one last question then relating to that. If you had three words th which represented traits, attributes, skills, whatnot, to share to the young uh, uh, project managers and project managers to be out there, uh, what would they be for them to be successful? So the first one that comes to my mind, and that's going to be for any row, any, anywhere in life, it's going to be your attitude. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming with a positive, fresh attitude. Um, it's work. Nobody wants to be at work. Nobody works, right? It, we love, we want to think we, well, excuse me, we want to love what we do for our job. Uh, but there's Mondays. And even on those hard Mondays, that's hard to get out, you know, coming with a fresh, positive attitude. Um, the sec, you know, the other thing I would say is be flexible, you know, being, being understanding, flexible, being flexible with your team, being flexible with yourself, it's going to take you a long way. Um, and then the other one would be organization, uh, skills come along, like organizations have been a great, um, leg up in, in, like has been, has been a strategic skill that has, you know, put me to be to continue to grow in this field. Um, Excellent, thank you. Um, I have I have a quick follow up question to that one. Mm -hmm. So I mean, maybe it's a bit repetitive, um, but like maybe like to broaden it up a little bit. Do you have like a specific quote that or like a saying that you live by whenever you do like projects like something to like remind yourself whenever you start a new project or something like that um you know i think when something when starting a new project it's sometimes we, we try to look at perfection um or we or as we're going especially in my role and i have one thing i've learned in corporate america it's like sometimes uh we try to aim for perfection and my quote to that is progress over perfection mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times especially in management roles you know we I think of it like a snowball effect right a minor change is going to have a big impact on the line um, consistency right you know so I would say something along the lines that you know we want to go for progress over perfection yeah. you're welcome Emily um yeah so yeah so we're actually a bit but um uh, ahead of schedule so mm -hmm. we might end, end earlier if needed but does anyone else have anyone have has any other questions uh we'll give like a f one minute to like type any more questions and uh we'll wrap up Um, wait, I just gotta... um, okay, so thank you all for, uh, for sharing and asking, like, uh, for, and for asking questions. Um, so one goal for PM Ready is, uh, to host this book talk and, or in panels is to nurture the next generation of project, uh, contributors. Um, and according to a report from the Project Management Institute, by 2030, the world needs uh, about 25, oh, sorry, yeah, 25 million new project management employees. Youth are tomorrow's project leaders. I would like to invite any adult professionals who are joining us today or listening to the events recording to share your project insights or leadership development insights with our youth. Um, I will uh, pause here to see if 
any adults among our audience today would like to share a message for our next generation of project con contributors um it's fine if there isn't uh just or like it can be like a thinking little moment to really think Okay, uh, so thank you so much, um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Cortez, for joining us today and for your openness and sharing your life journey. Um, and to our audience, I would like to invite you all to join our next virtual event, um, Native American Youth Leaders and Environmental Justice, which is a tentative title. It's still... I'm still working on it, but uh, this event is to celebrate the Native American Her Heritage Month, and it will be held on November 14th, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, um, and you may register using the link or the barcode on this slide. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, please kindly complete a quick survey using the link or barcode on the screen, and uh, please subscribe to our new, uh, to our monthly newsletters uh, to learn more about our events and if you are a PMI certified member please contact me via via email to request your PDU certificate my email is shown on the screen um, we are nine minutes ahead of schedule but it's okay um, and mm -hmm. I hope you guys have a great day and thank you so much likewise have a great day thank you guys for having me thank you